continue with the confession of sins, which is found on page 38. Please stand. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy as we join together now and pray. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. It is my privilege as a pastor to announce to you, dear friends, that God our Heavenly Father has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ he has removed your guilt forever you are his own dear child may God give you strength to live according to his will Amen. in the peace of forgiveness let us praise the Lord despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against him so that you may grow, we may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation 
which addresses you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor lose courage when you are punished by him, for the Lord disciplines him whom he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with the singing of our psalm, Psalm 73. he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time he went away and prayed, My father, if, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, thy will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands 
of sinners. This is our gospel lesson. We continue by singing hymn number 424. Abraham. 
Now we have to keep in mind here that his great uncle, Abraham's son Ishmael, was a member of the family until he was kicked out. You might remember that Bible story. He was born to a maid, a, a slave girl, and even though he was kicked out of the family, he was still Joseph's great uncle. Would you kind of make a note of that? Because that's going to come up later and I'm, I might need a little help remembering exactly how that works out. Now, Joseph was a pampered kid. His father, Jacob, loved him more than all his other sons. His father, Jacob, showed that. And do you think J Joseph loved it? Okay, that is a problem in some families, isn't it? Where, and if you, if you are a parent, there are times you have to be sure that you don't show favorites. You know what I'm talking about, right? A parent sometimes show favorite, favoritism to the child who's good at sports or good at singing or something like that. And sometimes it's very difficult to treat all of the children or grandchildren for that matter the same. Okay, I'll just read to you, our, our text was from Genesis 41. I'll read to you a few verses from Genesis 37. See if you can see any trouble brewing here, okay? So when Joseph, jo, um, now Israel, that's, that's Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Sound like trouble? Joseph, of course, appreciated that. Jacob made this ornamented robe. Now, if, if you're as old as I am, you might remember in Sunday school, when we had this Bible story, we talked about Joseph's coat of many colors. Remember, that was the title of it. It's, it's a translated richly or ornamented. His coat of many colors. And uh, I remember a, a little kindergarten student came home from Sunday school and the mother said, well, what did you learn about today? And the little girl said, we learned about Joseph's mini coat. And that was in the age of mini skirts, you know? And, and uh, the mother thought, this is kind of weird. So she asked the Sunday school teacher, what is this with Joseph's mini coat? Ah, the teacher said, we talked about his coat of mini colors. You see, that's a true story. But whatever it was like, Jacob showed his favoritism. Joseph loved it. The brothers hated it. And then, kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, is Joseph had a dream. And in that dream, he dreamed that someday he was going to rule over his brothers. Now you read scripture that happened in Egypt, didn't it? He, and he made the mistake of telling his brothers, who already hated him, someday I'm going to rule over you. And so what happened? This is in chapter 37. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, that symbol, you know, of the favoritism of the father, the richly ornamented robe, the mini, mini robe, the, the, the robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels to the Ishmaelites. Oh, Ishmaelites, did you remember? That's his great uncle's family. They hated him. There was trouble ever since, and there's trouble there today between the descendants of Isaac and the descendants of Ishmael, and how happy they must have been to get their hands on this distant cousin uh, who was born to the other side of the family. 
So they sold him to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. Meanwhile, they sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Well, what point do you think Joseph was experiencing in his life? An up or a down? Taken away from his home, favorite coat ripped off, thrown into a cistern. And, and you remember in those days, a cistern was really kind of just a big hole dug in the ground to collect rainwater. There's a difference. A cistern, uh, a well, they, they dug down in to get water out of the ground and pull water out. A cistern was just a hole in the ground to collect rainwater. On our farm, in the farmhouse, we had a cistern. We changed the downspout, the water ran into the cistern. We had a cistern pump in the pantry and we could pump out this rainwater. It wasn't good for drinking, you know, because it sat in the basement. Wonderful soft water for doing laundry and for bathing. So they threw him into the cistern. Oh, a little, little bright spot here, a little up, we are told. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Must have been a bad year there, right? Like we hear about on TV or read in the newspaper in the southern states that the reservoirs are, are going down and there's a lack of water. And, and do you see how God worked this out? If the cistern would have been deep and there would have been 10 feet of water in there, by the time anybody got around to it, Joseph would have died. So the cistern was empty. Aha! They've, this gave the brothers an idea. No sense leaving that kid in the cistern. Let's make a little cash out of this. So they pulled him out and sold him to their distant cousins, the Ishmaelites. They trucked him off to Egypt. What do you think that was, an up or a down? That's of course a down, wasn't it? Because uh, it, lo it looks like things could never ever get better. You see the contrast now? Favorite son of his father, wearing that coat, getting all the benefits that the favorite son got. Now he was a slave in Egypt, stripped of his coat, lost all of his privileges. Could a person sink any lower than that? Well, yeah, he did. Because there's another Bible story that tells us he was, he was sold to a man named Potiphar and he was a slave in his house and then Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of trying to assault her. So he was cast into prison. And there he was. A prisoner in a foreign land. Now, one of you might be saying, how does that fit in with our text for today? Didn't we read this? Pharaoh said to Joseph, Pharaoh the king of Egypt, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command and men shouted before him, make way. And thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Do you see the contrast? Made a slave, prime minister of Egypt, thrown in a cistern, riding in Pharaoh's chariot, stripped of his mini coat, wearing the fine coats available in Egypt, Hated by his brothers, people shouting, Make way, here comes Joseph. What caused this change? What brought about this change from rags to riches? And of course we know it was God, wasn't it? And when you read the story of Joseph, it's not just the story of one man, you know. God here was working to save his people Israel, 
and later on would get them back to the promised land because that's where the Savior would be born. Oh, Joseph surely was a fine young man. Wouldn't you think so? Read about it in Genesis. He was a fine young man. He worked very hard. But the fact that whatever he could do was not enough to earn God's blessing and the blessings that he received were given to him by God. There's a lesson in there already, isn't there? No matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter what your ethnic background is, no matter if you're young or old, no matter if you're, if you're uh, middle-aged, if you are going to succeed in life, you need what? You need God's blessings, don't you? And there's another lesson in there when we talk about ups and downs. Now I'm going to shock you right here. Don't get up and leave. But I'm going to shock you when I tell you that life has its downs. Does that shock you? <laughs> or do you know that already? You didn't learn anything new, did you? In our life, we have downs, don't we? Oh, we might not be thrown into a cistern. We might not have relatives take away our property, although that can happen too. We might not be sold as a slave, but we do have downs in our life. And it starts when we're young. It might be falling off your tricycle and scraping your knee. It might be falling out of the apple tree and breaking your arm. It might be when you're old, you get the diagnosis of cancer or heart disease. It might be the loss of a loved one. Whatever it is, as we go through life, there are downs. And the question is, what do we do then? And we look to Joseph, don't we? And we say, well, you know, we, we might be pretty nice people, and I guess you are all nice people, aren't you? But we don't deserve God's blessings. And we might say, well, we work very hard and we're very diligent, but we can't earn God's blessings. If we are enjoying God's blessings, it is only because of the grace and love of God that he chooses to bless us as he chose to bless Joseph. Now, when God blesses us, I don't know if anybody's going to be prime minister of Egypt. Do you think you'll make that? I don't think I'll make it. Um, I, I don't think I'll ever have anybody standing there and cheering as I ride by in my chariot, which would probably be like a Rolls Royce today. But we do have God's promise to be with us and to bless us. And let's not forget about the ups, friends. Because if you look at your life, there are a lot of ups, aren't there? And I, uh, when I visit the shut-in people, we have some grumblers. I always remind them, you have to also look at God's blessings, don't you? And if we look at our life and we look at God's blessings, our blessings are many. And when we look at them, we can say, I didn't deserve that. I'm a sinner. I tried to lead a good life like Joseph did, but I find that daily I have to confess my sins. I didn't deserve that. I, I use my skill and ability, but maybe not the way I should, that if I am enjoying God's blessings, it is only due to the grace and mercy of God. And we thank Him for His blessings. So what are you in today in your life? Are you in an up or a down? You don't have to answer. Some of you might say, life is a bummer. I remember my son, when he was a teenager, came home one day from Fox Valley Lutheran and said, you know, Dad, life is not always a bowl of cherries. Sometimes it's the pits. And you've probably heard that before, and it, it's true, isn't it? Um, and, or or you're, you might be having health problems or whatever. Or maybe some of you will say, well, everything is going well. 
And if you can say that, thank the Lord. But in each situation, we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, bless us as you bless Joseph and continue to be with us as long as we live on this earth where we do expect to have ups and downs. God bless you. Amen. We'd like to continue now with confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And you will find that printed on page 43. I think, is that right? Page 43? Close enough, right? Okay, let's confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for prayer now. We will have a prayer and then continue with the Lord's Prayer on page 43. And we pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach the end of the summer season, we remember all the blessings that you have given to us this summer and this year. We thank you that once again you have richly provided for the needs of our bodies. You have kept us sheltered under, sh under the shadow of your wings. If you have allowed some adversity or sorrow to come into our lives, you have been there to guide us and comfort us with your word. We thank you for the greatest blessing of all, that you have fed our souls on your word and sacrament. We ask you to be with us and guide us through the fall and winter ahead. Above all, we ask you to strengthen our faith through your word and sacrament. Keep us close to you, that someday we may inherit the kingdom which you have prepared for us in heaven. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we continue with the prayer on page 43. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace.
you all here today. Uh, we don't know exactly where this COVID thing is going yet, um, so I'm not shaking hands with people. We will have to do that virtually, so uh, good morning to all of you, and we hope the day is coming when we can shake hands and when I can hug all the ladies, okay? Um, I, I got two months stored up already for the last year, so um, we do say God bless you, uh, God keep you healthy, and thank you for being here and worshiping the Lord with us. And that would then end our service because Pastor Frost, he'll be back tomorrow. He doesn't have any announcements. God be with you. Mm -hmm.